Hey guys here. Today I want to go through what I want to see in the gameplay patch. Obviously, I want to hear from you guys on about what you think maybe in this game needs to be changed, what kind of things are bugging you, um, and overall, you know, what gameplay wise, not not necessarily like the the you know the shows Diamond Dynasty wise, gameplay wise, what you want to see fixed. So I'm gonna go through my list here. Let me know what you guys think here. Um, let's just you know, I'm not really ordering them. It's just kind of my list, right? Where, which I was off my head, and I'll probably miss some stuff. So guys, let me know. Uh, I think sinkers need a little bit of a nerf still. I love that they're not as good as last year at high in the zone. It doesn't break nearly as much. Um, but I still think the hitch up, it causes a lot of nightmares, especially guys with like high end movement on their sinkers. Like it, it's tough because guys that are like sinker cutter pitchers are, are the meta again, right? Uh, like, like the Cliff Lee, his sinker cutter, circle change, knuckle curve, that kind of stuff is it's, it's deadly, right? Like sinker cutter change, right? And then maybe, maybe a slider curve is also nice too. Um, you know, you know, Brandon Webb is really nice. Cabrera with his sinker is really nice. Like a lot of these cards, you really do kind of need a sinker. Now, if the sinker kind of gets, it goes away. Our ERA is going to like get exploded is, uh, I, I mean, pitching going to die, is hitting going to get that much better. We'll see because like the year started off with hitters being so much better overall than pitchers. Now that pitchers have kind of like uh, gotten back up there and, and kind of like equalized it out versus like the live series cards. We're going to see a lot more of pitching duels. I hear a lot more people complaining about how unfun it is at Hall of Fame and especially legend because of sinker cutters, like uh, basically taking over the meta, right? Like pinpoint is too good especially if the pitcher has confidence right if you can't touch the pitcher in the first couple of innings you're in for like kind of a, a long game right there for the next few because they'll be able to place the ball basically wherever, the, wherever they want unless they major league screw up right like confidence has been crazy and it's been crazy for a few years in this game right we asked like when, when we were talking about the devs like last year like uh, we were saying hey we, we just want curves and other off-speed stuff not to hang as much. I mean, they ended up giving us, like, an infinity gauntlet in which silver pitchers can dot, like, Greg Maddox in his prime. Like, this this game has gotten kind of wild now with pitchers, right? So, like, it is tough that only, like, a certain type of pitcher can really succeed. You got to have either an outlier or a sinker um, to really make it uh, go well for you. So, it is too bad that uh, control this year, while it is super nice, while it makes uh, pinpoint easier... It's crazy just how powerful it is. So hopefully maybe, I don't know, a, a little bit of a nerf to pinpoint, I guess, would be nice in my opinion. I know that might be controversial to some of you. Let me know. But I, I just want I just wanted to die a little bit, right? I, I just want pitcher confidence because it's going to kill your hits too. Uh, I, I want that to, again, be a little bit less uh, like of a factor in actually pitching in this game. So uh, it feels like for the last few years, pitcher confidence has, has been a big touch point in this game. And I, I do feel like it is still a little bit too powerful. I think contact swing needs to be nerfed. I know they've talked about contact swing. Our twoing needs to go away. They should just have a way of like seeing the pitchers as his stamina, his uh, confidence, what pitches came to last at bat, just without having uh, the the opponent be able to R2 you or maybe have them R2, but just not affect the opponent's pitcher. It is very annoying going against guys like that. Uh, it just makes for a bad gameplay experience, very toxic online experience, and I just don't think it's uh, good for the game. Uh, bunt dancing. I think bunt dancing, again, is, you know, all you're doing is trying to piss off your opponent. It's not doing anything productive. I, I like trying to remove some of the toxicity and some of the ways that people like take advantage of it uh well, it, you know i think it's good for the online game right like uh, i think every time how you saw that is every time you squared a bunt and and bring it back subtract six contact and power right it's easy now so they they do it like six times boom negative 36 contact and power people will stop bunt dancing asap it's done it's dead and i think bunting itself right especially with like an all speed squad is too powerful it's very easy to lay down a god tier bunt like just just you know square away and then basically you use your juan pierre's your loftins your your other cards that are super fast and you can make it to first right without any problem and, and you can do it on the third baseline or to the second baseman first baseman anywhere so it's very hard to play bunt defense uh, against these these guys that are super fast right so Maybe I think that the, the solution to that is if you bunt, maybe people have to square it up with a PCI, right? I think that just makes the most sense, right? Like, so you can't just like, okay, so you're basically getting rid of the timing aspect of swinging a bat and you basically make them be able to hit the ball with their PCI still. So make bunting actually have some sort of skill versus just hitting triangle or Y and then getting first base if you get like, you know, a bad, a bad animation of the field, which, you know, oftentimes you will because they'll just beat it out or or whatever, right? Like, bunting is way too powerful, in my opinion, because it's way too easy and way too successful to get on base. Um, base running. Base running, it's needed an overhaul for years. They talked about before the year about how base running changed. It hasn't changed much this year, right? Sometimes you can't even highlight your player, right? Like, it's like oh, just, just highlight the player and send him to the base you want. So, today, literally, I try to highlight the guy. It literally wouldn't highlight. 
So for some reason, players, uh, and not just the highlight problem, because that's once you highlight them, then you can point them to the base you want. Uh, but sometimes you do need to hit L1 because there's multiple base runners and the, and the player's moving fast. Sometimes, like, players end up at the same base if you if you use L1, right? A guy will be going past third, he'll, he'll change to going home, and then you'll take your finger off L1, and then for some reason, he'll change back to going to third, and then you got from second that's going to third. So you have two guys ending up at third base, so you're going to out. Very frustrating. They should make it so that way guys can't end up at the third base if you're using L1, right? It's same base if you're using l1 right don't allow two players to occupy the same place or be going to the same place they just it just shouldn't happen right like there's a computer it, it reacts instantaneously milliseconds not even it's even faster than that they can decide hey this guy shouldn't be going to third if this guy's going to third right so they got to fix that um, I don't think fielders have enough agility. Sometimes in the outfield, it feels like you, you, you're pressing your thumbstick one way. They take like three steps and they try to go the other way a little bit. And they're just like, they just, it's like next gen Madden, but worth. So like maybe increase the agility of outfielders a little bit, but like uh, outfielders are a little fast, right? Like the ballparks play kind of small. So I really love big fenced uh, ballparks with a little bit of elevation, not top elevation. That's kind of how I made my, you know, create a stadium Hogwarts. I, I made them deep fences and then like 1600 foot elevation. So that way it plays a little bit bigger. Um, and the balls have a little bit more in the gaps, like Buxton just isn't chasing down everything. So like guys, maybe, you know, the reaction's really high, their speed's really high, but it does feel like their, their acceleration is kind of insane, right? So maybe tune down the acceleration a little bit of the outfielders. The reaction can still be great because, you know, 96 reaction on these guys, not top end reaction, you know, they should be reacting very quick, but their acceleration is kind of uh, insane. I think first and third baseman auto knives are a little wild, like right, like bad fielders, right? Jim Tomey's got a 58 reaction, but he will dive and pick a ball like it's nobody's business. So Jim Tomey and other like amazing first baseman, um, uh, you guys know David Ortiz too is also a god tier fielder right there. It's like Frank Thomas from a few years ago. Well, here he was he was he, he was going wild. There's like a brick wall right there. Now first baseman aren't nearly as good this year, especially with the ball directly at them. They'll, they'll make a, they'll miss the play uh, if they don't get into the dive animation from the computer. They'll definitely have a chance. To miss play so that's like it's a lot better now than it used to be but i still think the auto dives and how insanely powerful they are might need to be tuned a little bit with how good the computer is at diving for players without any input from the players and then sometimes they'll even get like a replay of it which is even crazier right they'll give it like an auto dive replay i'm like what the heck that's kind of annoying um uh, i think player animations like on the infield take a little bit too long um to kind of decide to throw right they play out the full animation maybe there should be like a, a shortened animation for the infield where like oh i gotta get this ball out my hand quick so like it's, it's like you know how quarterbacks under pressure and in, in madden and irl they're like they release the ball super quick so like they get it out their hand boom it's out and it's it's going to the base they want it to so that way like guys with like high speed can't really choose you as well on on the base pass because it does take like a full second for them to go through the entire wind up in order to throw it through the ball so it is unfortunately too long in the infield sometimes for some throws that don't really need to be that long um and, and then lastly i think uh, very importantly um i do think hitting too much of it happens when your pci isn't on the ball right i've hit home runs where my pci has not been on the ball right and have me with great crazy hitters too i think i just did it today with jackie the, the pci did not even intersect the ball in the ball went out of the park i think it was a ship at special but i think too much contact gets made when you don't have contact being made right there right the outer pci should uh, make the ball fall, right? The inner PCI should be like, and, and guys sometimes with high contact, like Jackie's been crazy for me lately, but sometimes guys with high contact, like the whole PCI, if like you hit on the top of the PCI, but your entire PCI surrounds the ball, that should be very solid contact, right? What's the point of low contact hitters if, if the ball can be hit very solidly when it's not in the PCI, but the ball can be hit really badly if it's inside the PCI of high contact hitters. So sometimes that's a little frustrating. Obviously, you know, some of it plays into timing and, and like swing timing, obviously where the ball is, everything goes into it. And it's very hard to code, but like hopefully they can keep patching that, making hitting more rewarding for barreling up the ball uh, instead of getting rewarded, um, not for barreling it up. And sometimes, you know, you know, you don't get rewarded when you center it up. And that's frustrating, right? So, uh, perfect, perfect fly outs to the warning track with Chipper Jones against a left-handed hitter where he's got 125s across the board against it. That shouldn't happen, right? Like, I think perfect perfects maybe need to be boosted up from like 85% successful to 90, 95% successful. Uh, just make them, because like, you, you really can't, you can't do much better than a perfect perfect. Like, you literally mastered it. So, one perfect perfect on something should really reward you. I'm saying it does reward you quite a bit, right? 85% of the time is very nice. It's very high, but man, the, like if you get a few perfect perfects a game, man, it does it does it tilt me and i'm sure it tilts other people too um so those are my opinions on what needs to be like looked at slash patch and they've already talked about a few things they are looking at so i'm hoping you know that they, they put out a nice patch you know soon i love that it's been over a month since the game launch they haven't done any gameplay training changes that's 
awesome. I absolutely adore that they waited for our feedback for, for a whole month, for a while, before they changed anything. Because, like, in previous years, they'd mess up the game almost right away. And, like, it would just be so frustrating. Like, don't change anything until we really play the game in depth. So, I really love that they've done this. Uh, but those are my thoughts. What do you guys think? What do you guys want for the gameplay uh, patches? Let me know in the comments. Thumbs up if you like the videos. Thumb down if, thumbs down if you didn't. Uh, let me know. Otherwise, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Call to action. I'll see you tomorrow.